to Chatting with CHA, a series featuring interviews with CHA's industry thought leaders. I'm Jessica Baxter, Marketing Communications Specialist here at CHA, and today we are joined by John Joyce, Generation and Energy Management Business Practice Leader. John, thanks for joining us today. Absolutely. Pleasure. So, John, one of your areas that you specifically focus on is campus energy. Colleges and university campuses have a vast and varied energy needs to fuel their operations. They also need to enhance resiliency and all while trying to meet sustainability goals. Can you give us an idea of the breadth of challenges they face when it comes to campus utility planning? Absolutely, Jess. Having a realistic plan to achieve 2030 neutrality and 2050 zero carbon emission goals. We know what the targets look like, both qualitatively and quantitatively. It's all about how we get there. In our team's experience, we know that there are a plethora of viable renewable energy technologies that should be considered in developing the framework of any campus expansion or conversion. One of the key challenges is to select electrical and thermal power generation technologies and distribution technologies that will lend its hand to integrating not only current, but future renewable technologies. In terms of electrical generation technologies, solar PV implementation costs have finally shrunk to below that of conventional carbon, carbon fuel-based generation and, and offer unsurpassed reliability and flexibility options varying in configuration and location. This adaptable deployment is further complemented by various forms of interconnection programs such as community solar and other related available incentives by jurisdiction. Now, the historic varying and limiting capacity factor of this technology can essentially be removed from the equation when we connect these arrays to a battery energy storage system and corresponding controller, which again, are quickly becoming more economically viable. Additionally, we, we see the integration of biofuels, biomass and hydrogen fuel blending as near-term front runners for cogeneration and dedicated thermal systems. These fuels offer access to carbon neutral or carbon reduction measures that can typically be offered um, on site with, with the facility's current assets offering a bridging solution for the campus to economically transition to, again, a carbon neutral or, or eventual carbon zero platform. Um, these alternative fuels will play a massive role in the energy supply strategy, taking us into the next quarter century. But, you know, we've got a long way to go as a society in order to generate the economies to scale that will be required to economically produce these fuels for mass transmission and distribution. You know, John, I know you touched on this a little bit in your last answer, but what are some of the biggest challenges, but also opportunities for energy when considering electrical distribution in steam chilled or hot water conversion? Yes, there's lots. Considering the remaining economic life of assets and their maintenance requirements or costs for that matter, not only from an O&M standpoint, but from a redundancy and resiliency standpoint as well. There's lots of variables that play into this equation, including the cost of emitting a ton of carbon. As any campus considers shifting building heating loads from the thermal to electrical spectrum, we need to determine how this transition will occur considering the current condition of those existing assets or the equipment and systems, in addition to the capabilities and capacities that may or may not be available from the utility to coincide with this transition. Here we see great opportunity for campuses to deploy thermal energy storage systems for hot and chilled water. The augmentation of a thermal energy storage system provides an opportunity for the traditional tri-generation system to avoid steam bypass or steam dumping to a condenser, which in turn allows the plant to achieve a higher net cycle efficiency in electrical load following mode, of course. Similarly, augmenting a battery energy storage system into a tri-generation scheme allows for the ability to operate the prime movers in their most efficient mode of operation, and that's full load. And this allows the system to follow the campus's thermal load for a finite period, which of course is the capacity of the battery energy storage system. Energy storage systems, you know, not only operate and bring, up, bring about operational opportunities for, for many current tri-generation systems, but also provide the opportunity or rather the ability 
to store off hour renewable energy such as solar, wind and hydro or even carbon free nuclear energy for that matter. Biofuels, non-carbon fuel blending and energy storage systems are truly reliable, flexible and adaptable measures, not only to complement, not complement, that's yesterday's terminology, but rather complete the round out of the remaining economical life of a facility's current generation assets in a carbon neutral or carbon reduced manner. John, how are these colleges and universities dealing with carbon neutrality goals and how is that impacting their planning? These are key drivers of the planning and implementation process for campus energy, Jess. Many jurisdictions have adopted aggressive net reduction and net zero targets that are not that far out when you think about how quickly time passes. You know, many institutions are signatories to various climate action plans and accords. Many purchase RECs or renewable energy credits in part or in whole for their electricity supply. And students and youth are becoming far more entrained in real world or global issues than ever before and are involved as change makers. And that goes right to the very core of the individual in deciding what college or university they will consider and select. Of course, there are other key drivers such as reliability, you know, where the core mission critical uh, uh, aspects of the campus cannot be interrupted. You know, there's such factors as um, flexibility and adaptability to consider, you know, the energy market is currently in a state of flux as, as decarbonization becomes a reality. Of course, we can't forget the economics, but sustainability to obtaining a carbon neutral status and future enhancing the status uh, of the university or college amongst uh, peer institutions, it's, it's key, Jess, the, the fuse is lit. Finally, John, can you tell us what does the future really hold for campus utility planning? Opportunity, opportunity for the integration of renewable distributive energy resources. We've spoken about electrical and thermal generation, but the third leg of the stool is equally as important and that's the distribution scheme. The selection of this element must provide the campus a platform to integrate a portfolio of renewable energy resources to achieve their decarbonization goals and allow for a customized energy strategy combining the right systems and technologies to match the specific needs throughout all phases of their long-term energy supply program. Further development of these district energy systems over time, you know, possibly to towards a, um, a low temperature hot water platform, this will increase the facility's ability to further integrate energy recovery and high efficient technologies such as ground source heat pumps or variable refrigerant flow electric heat pump based building systems for new buildings, of course, or where applicable in buildings that have uh, potential to be served from lower, uh, lower enthalpy, enthalpy sources. Thanks for joining us, John. If you would like to contact John to learn more about campus utility planning, visit chacompanies.com changemakers for contact information along with this recording and other episodes of Chatting with CHA. Also, be sure to check out our full discussion on the Chatting with CHA podcast available wherever you get your podcasts. That's going to do it for us. We'll be chatting again soon.